It's time for the big one. We talked about Bloberta a few days ago, so now we're gonna talk about her husband, our main character's father, and the main villain of the entire show, Clay Puppington. The worst of the worst when it comes to Moralton residents, this guy is something else. A lot of people have a lot of theories and observations about Clay, but very few people have compiled them into one whole video. So now sit back and relax while we dissect Clay Puppington. Here we go. So first off, we have to start off with Clay's quote-unquote origin story because every villain needs an origin story. Clay was the golden child of his household, but that's not saying a lot because he was the only child. Sort of. His dad seemed like a kind, respectable man who tried to be a good dad, but his mom not so much. She kept losing child after child due to miscarriages caused by her drinking, smoking, and going on roller coasters. Yeah, that's a good sign. Oh boy. So when she didn't do any of that stuff when she was pregnant with Clay, Clay came out as a normal functioning boy. So she saw it at change all of that. Clay became very self-absorbed as a child, making everything all about him. I know that that's usually a kid thing in general, but Clay took it to the next level. Everything always had to be about him, or the pictures had to involve him in some way. Definitely not a very considerate kid. And then when he realized that he was gonna have other siblings before his mother miscarried, he played a joke, pretending to kill himself with a family gun. And this caused his mother to have a heart attack and die. Ever since then, Clay's dad hated Clay and slapped him around for every little thing. He blamed Clay for the death of his wife, and to be fair, that's not necessarily unfounded, but still, he's just a kid. At some point, Clay associated these frequent beatings and slappings with his father loving him, which isn't true at all. Like I said, his dad hates him and considers him a disappointment. He even decided to break a generations-long tradition of the Puppington family hunting trip just because he hated his son. Clay didn't really pick up on that because of his narcissism. His mother mother trained him to not see anybody hating him under any circumstances, so somehow, obviously, this has to be his dad's way of showing affection. And we can see this with how he treats Oral when he becomes an adult. He spanks Oral for basically every little mess up he does. Even for minor things like questioning his authority. And notice how he only does this to Oral? He doesn't do this to Shapey or Block and definitely not Bloberta, showing that he hates them. He doesn't care about them at all. Like we discussed in their previous character requests, he sees Shapey as an illegitimate child and a constant reminder that his wife was unfaithful. And then Block just showed up out of nowhere and BAM! Second illegitimate child. Why would he want that? It's just another mouth to feed and he already is strapped for cash. And Bloberta ruined his life. He hates her with a burning passion, his number one least favorite person ever. Let's talk about that. Clay was a squeaky clean Mormon stereotype without the Mormonism and Bloberta set eyes on him and knew that she had to make him hers. Why? Simply because he was a decent looking single man around her age and she was desperate to marry literally anybody. Clay never wanted to get married because in his words, it wasn't something that would last. However, we now know, given what happened in the end of the show, this was also because he was struggling with his bisexuality. It's clear that a lot of the people of Moralton don't really look so kindly on that kind of stuff, so it was up to Clay to repress it all. But Bloberta struck anyways, and then kind of manipulated, kind of tricked Clay into marrying her, and immediately he knew that he was done for. His life, his plans, all gone. He was miserable before he even said, I do. And ever since then, he's plotted not necessarily necessarily specific revenge, but just horrible, nasty thoughts against his wife. He also got hooked onto alcohol because of Bloberta and is now a barely functioning alcoholic. He drinks day in and day out to get his pain away, but it never works. In fact, it only makes things worse. He can have the occasional beer goggles that makes him see his family in a positive light, but as soon as they're gone, it doubles his pain every single time. And he takes it out on anybody he sees, especially his wife and kids. Of course, Bloberta is constantly neglected, but Oral? He not only spanks him, although it in Clay's case, that's a sign of showing familial love. He also neglects Oral a lot. Whenever Oral says something like, I love you, Dad, he'll always say something like, oh yeah, I'm hungry too, or yeah, that's good. He's got a complicated 
their relationship with the boy that is often explored in very different ways throughout the series. He wants Oral to be a lot like him, basically mold him into a good young Christian boy. And hey, if he also gets addicted to alcohol, whatever, that's not his fault. He did everything he could as the good, strong father. So he wants to parent Oral in that way, but he doesn't want to parent him in any other way at all. He doesn't really care about his friends or even want to meet them. He doesn't want to get involved in Oral's affairs, and he only wants to talk to Oral when Oral's screwing up in a way that affects him. And those of you who watch the show will probably wonder, how do things like raising the dead or smoking crack affect Clay at all? Well, that's because Clay values one thing above all else, his image. And that's not just because he's the mayor of Moralton, although we'll talk about that later. It's because he wants to have a good standing in the community. He wants to be that upstanding, good, righteous man. So if Oral's doing something to hurt his reputation, then he's going to be very upset. Like in the episode Innocence, when he gets outraged because he has to take responsibility for giving Oral bad advice. This is also why he didn't divorce Bloberta in The Best Christmas Ever. He wanted to make sure that everyone in Moralton saw him as a good guy. And obviously, if he divorced his wife, that wouldn't be good at all, even if it was for something like infidelity. Because if word got out that Blaberta cheated on him, how would that make him look? It would make him look weak, that's what, and he can't stand that at all. So that leads me to another part about Clay, it's his strange relationship with his family. I know I've kind of discussed how he's very distant, but there's also another aspect that was explored in Sacrifice. It's that he wants them all together as a unit, not because he wants it, but so that other people can't have it. This is most specifically relating to Blaberta. Now that he's married her, he doesn't want anyone else having her or else he's going to be seen as a failure. He only keeps her around just so that he can keep her away from other people. And this explains why he hates Shapey so much, because he's a constant reminder that he failed in his mission. Blaberta did go out and seek somebody else. She slept with them and had a kid, pretending all these years that he was Clay's, even though this whole time Clay had a funny feeling. I mean, for one, he doesn't even remember conceiving Shapey, and two, she Shapey doesn't look anything like him. But who does Shapey look like? Oh, that's who? Danielle Stopframe, Clay's best friend and pseudo-lover. Clay, like I said, is a bisexual man, and he struggles with that, trying to repress it, but also having these unbeatable feelings that he has to get out, especially because his home life is so terrible that, essentially, Danielle here, who he's desperately in love with, is his escape. And Stopframe knows this full well. He's been trying to destroy Clay and Blaberta's marriage for at least seven years because he's the one that sought Blaberta out and then wanted to have a kid with her just so that he could get close to Clay. Throughout the show, it was constantly teased that Clay maybe knows what Stopframe did and maybe knows how he feels, but he can't really act on that despite feeling the same way. They were mostly used as jokes throughout the show, but then the infamous third season rolled around and we started exploring this as a legitimate character trait for not only Clay, but Stopframe as well. Maybe we'll give Stopframe his own character quest, who's to say. But right now we're talking about Clay. Hey, that rhymes. We see Clay struggling more and more with who he is right now and who he wants to be. Of course, we don't feel anything for him because he's a terrible, awful, irredeemable person, and he gets exactly what he deserves. What is it? Well, we'll discuss that towards the end because right now we have to talk about Clay's development throughout the series. In the first season, Moral Oral was strictly a comedy with some minor character elements here and there. He basically served to be Oral's disciplinarian dad who gave him some really strange strange life advice. And then as the second season rolled around, we got to see just how much of a tightwad and angry man and abusive husband he is. And then nature happens, where he takes Oral on the father-son hunting trip, the same one that he never got to go on with his dad because he decided to pick the tradition right back up. Here, he finally opens up to Oral about just how miserable he is, only for him to shoot Oral in the leg and not care at all. Partially because he's drunk and also partially because, eh, it's not his problem. He's not the one who got shot. This causes Oral to see Clay as the man he truly is for the very first time in his entire life. And from then on, their relationship would never be the same ever again. And of course, a lot of season three takes place before the hunting trip. And even then, we get to see a lot of the darker sides of Clay. Like how when he was preparing Carrying Oral for the hunting trip, he decided to favor Doey instead of him, and then later told Doey to his face that the whole thing was just a ploy to get Oral to be a better shot. Or when Oral has a vision about heaven, he literally beats it out of him.
of him. In the penultimate episode, Nesting, he and Oral have their very first fight. It becomes clear to Clay that he can no longer scare Oral into doing what he wants. That and his spankings no longer have any effect on him. In fact, Oral just doesn't care about them at all. Gone are the days where he had any respect for his son and where he could mold him into a little version of himself. He's now entirely powerless without an ally in this war zone of a house. And what does he do? He tells Oral that he's glad he shot him. Yeah, that's what he says to his own son. As if things couldn't get worse, huh? At least he's got Danielle, right? Not necessarily, because he screws that up as well. Miss Sensordoll was running against Clay to become mayor of Moralton because, let's face it, Clay isn't the best leader. He's corrupt, he's lazy, and he's only doing the job for the money. However, Sensordoll realizes that Clay has an Oedipus complex and decides to exploit it. Clay ends up going along with it too, and in public no less. He's not really attracted to her, like, at all. He just wants to do this so that she can stop bothering him when he's doing his marital duties. Danielle sees this, and then a light bulb goes off in his head. Just like Oral, he sees just how bad of a person Clay is. In fact, he and Oral end up bonding over it and become good friends. Clay sees this and becomes extremely jealous. And when he goes over to Danielle's apartment to confront him, he accidentally confesses his love, but then decides to double down and say, yes, this is how he feels, and he's ready to leave Wilberta for him. Him. Only problem is, it's too late. Danielle's no longer interested and doesn't want anything to do with him ever again, so he has to leave and then never talk to the one he loves ever again. And this is where Clay's arc ends. He no longer has the respect of any of his kids, the one he loves, the community, and also he's stuck in a marriage that he can't stand. He and Bloberta are doomed to spend eternity together because they don't want to risk ruining their image, at least more so than it already has been, and he certainly doesn't have any other prospects, so what's he gonna do? Be alone forever? That's not a good look. Although this wasn't really gonna be the end for Clay. Had the show gone on, he was gonna be forever alone. Not alone with Bloberta, just alone in general. Bloberta was eventually gonna fall in love with Officer Papermouth, and they were gonna find a legitimately happy relationship. And it's also assumed that she would've ran off with him and started a new family. So as soon as he gets rejected by Coach Stopframe, that's it. Just like what he wanted in help, he's gonna be alone by himself with the Bible only this time, he's come so far since then that that's no longer what he wants. But there's nothing he can do about that now because, as Coach Stopframe said, it's too late. So either way, Clay was doomed to have an unhappy ending, whether Moral Oral was cancelled or ended naturally, so yeah. He does get his just desserts in the end. Honestly, I gotta say, Clay is my favorite character in the entire show. Not because he's a good person, I think we can all agree he's like the worst in the show, but it's because he's so fascinating. Literally every Everything he does is evil. He hasn't done one nice thing in the entire run of the show. I tried to find some, trust me. I looked all over and I couldn't find any. He's such an irredeemable monster, but he's so fascinating to just dissect and look at all the layers surrounding him because, as Clay says, he poisons everyone else around him, so obviously he's the center of all the moral oral development. Take a look at all the characters we talked about before. Shapey, Block, Bloberta, Miss Sensordoll, even Oral. All of their development comes from him. If Clay wasn't the way he was, this show wouldn't be nearly as good, but because he is and because he's just that Terrible, Moral Oral is one of the greatest adult swim shows that ever was. He makes the show worth watching, and I think more people need to give him the credit that he deserves. Well folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? What do you think of Clay Puppington? Who's your favorite character in the show? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Real quick, I'd like to thank our Patreon executive producers, Reziel, Leaf Razor, Azarius, Michael Bellamy, and MD the Dude. If you too would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then consider donating to our Patreon, which has a link in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.